Hello, welcome back to another video. My name is Paige and this is my January wrap up. So I read 10 books in January which is actually amazing for me considering like I average it about 4 or 5 a month. Um, I think I had a great range of like genres and great like between physical and Kindle copies as well. So I'm very proud of how we started off the year. Um, I'm going to go in the order that I read them. Um, so the first one of 2024 that I actually read was The Haunting of Hill House. I gave this one a three stars I think. Um, I did enjoy it. I feel like I did compare it to the series more than I should have. Like the way that the story was laid out I just thought was was the series. Like that was how it was. Forgetting that this book was obviously like out well well before the series and was like written a very long time ago um but it still follows the life of Nell and Theodora and Luca all in the story as well um but Eleanor Nell gets invited to Dr Montague's um house which is Hill House to stay there for some reason I think he's putting like a little investigation thing together I don't really know what it is but he wants to see like out of the three that he's invited so Eleanor, Theodora and Luke which one is more worthy of having the house but I think Luke has actually inherited it. I'm not entirely sure on the actual full story um, but saying that I did enjoy it to a point I think if I wasn't comparing it to the TV series I definitely would have enjoyed it a lot more. I feel like the writing was a bit hard to read in some parts like just the way it was written like I said it was written a long time ago so I feel like sometimes it was a bit difficult to read like some of the sentences and some of the words that were put in it. Um, it did make me feel a bit uneasy like so there was definitely spookiness in there I just feel like the spookiness could be ramped up a little bit felt a lot of it was like I mean we had maybe like two or three chapters on Nell's journey up to the house and it was a bit confusing in parts like between like the different characters and things like that because it sort of hinted that they did know each other and sort of hinted that they didn't so it yeah it was it was good like it wasn't a bad start to the year with reading <laughs> But I wouldn't say like it was a very, very good book. I would recommend it, but I would definitely recommend not going into it thinking that it's <laughs> like the TV series. Um, but that's just a mistake that I make all of the time anyway. So that was a three stars. The next book I read was Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. Based on the um, cover, I actually thought this was a thriller, but it turns out it's not. It's like a YA fantasy. I rated this a four stars. I was very, very surprised by how much I enjoyed it. It did have the weird photographs in it, which is why I thought it was a thriller, um, which were quite spooky actually. Um, but like they sort of meshed in well with the story, and they're actually real photographs as well, which I thought was quite cool. Um, but this is about Jacob, who's 16, and he. Um, finds this his granddad used to live in this house in Wales on a like little island in Wales and when his granddad dies he sort of like researches these photos because his granddad would tell him stories about these people that he used to live in the home with but Jacob didn't believe them because like I mean who would believe that someone can float in the air or that someone has like two faces you know stuff like that um so he did some digging and he actually found like a letter that was from someone that like sort of hinted about this house in Wales and it would either go one of two ways either he would go or he wouldn't go but if he didn't go he wouldn't have the story um so yeah he goes there and then he finds out that his granddad was telling the truth um I feel like just this whole story was very very magical I feel like it was a cross between the house in the Carolean Sea and like a bit of Harry Potter like it was just very magical very like all the characters were really likeable um, and it just had that way in it where nothing could possibly have been wrong like you know in a story sometimes you know you're looking at especially like in thrillers and things you're looking at dates and you're thinking oh that 
doesn't add up like you know that can't happen that's unrealistic i feel like in this book like nothing was unrealistic because of the way that it made you feel like magic wise you just yeah you just sort of believed anything and um, but i really really enjoyed it i was actually very very surprised i feel like this was definitely a book where you don't judge a book by its cover um because i was a bit I was a bit skeptical when I realised it wasn't actually a thriller. I was like, hmm, I'm gonna like it based on like the what the blurb said and stuff. And then yeah, I did. I really, really enjoyed it and I'm very, very excited to carry on the rest of the series. I think there's like maybe six books in the series or something. Um I'm not entirely sure. But yeah, I would definitely recommend it and definitely like if it's one that you've either been putting off or you've seen not very good reviews about it I would definitely go in blind and go in and just give it a chance because it definitely is you know a very good book it does start off slow but once you're into it and you get into know the characters and things like that it's yeah it's great so that yeah I would recommend it So the next book that I read was A Daily Devoted Dexter which is the second book in the Dexter series. I rated this one of four stars as well. It was good because the first Dexter book I actually read as my first read of 2023 and this one was my third read of 2024 so it kind of like I'm not going to make it a pattern. <laughs> Like I do, t I do tend to, to like intend to read the rest of the Dead series this year. Um, but the second story follows on from the first one with like terms of like where Dexter is in his life and things like that. It's following Dexter's life still, and it's following like a completely new case, which is gruesome. Not to like a oh, bad bad point because there isn't like much said in detail in the way of how like it is, but. Um, yeah, Dex is up to his normal things of trying to kill someone and getting, you know, is he going to get caught, is he not? But in this book, um, Sergeant Dox, who is his colleague, actually, like, is a bit wary of him, like, a bit thinking, like, oh, he's a bit suspicious now, and follows him, which means Dexter can't do what he actually wants to do, which is kill someone. But he does it for the right reasons, like, he won't just kill anyone random, he'll actually, like, do it for just to you know get people out of sticky situations that they might be in if this person was still alive so you know what I mean um but yeah these are very very easy books to read they're very enjoyable like like I said I did watch the Dexter series and like I said with Haunted Hill House I do have a tendency to um compare but um, I did compare a little bit but not too much and I did really really enjoy it. It's a bit longer than the second one, the first one sorry, um, but yeah it's just it's a Dexter book. I sort of like I had an inkling of what was going to happen, you know we see more of Dexter's character and personality come through and he's just a funny personality like there were bits that made me laugh, bits where like I was a bit taken aback and obviously bits that are like a bit like hard to talk about so I would definitely check the trigger warnings going into this one um but still a very good book and I can't wait to carry on the rest of the series. So the next book I read I actually read on my Kindle I'm not going to get it out of the case but I'll pop a picture on the screen and um, so this one was called The Wolf and the Feather I did read it at four stars um, this one's about Hannah who has Down syndrome. She's 10 years old and she moves to Wales with her father. I can't remember his name because it is a Welsh name and I don't want to pronounce it wrong. Um, but I'll pop his name on screen here so you can see. Um, but her mum's not really in the picture. Like she comes and goes a little bit. I think she lives like in London or something. But yeah, she's not massively in the picture. But they moved to Wales and to be closer to the dad's family. And there's like this cut in behind their house. So Hannah investigates one day as you would be in like a curious child. Um, and she comes like across this wolf that can talk. <laughs> which she's very taken aback by but the wolf sort of like reminds her or something in that woods reminds her of her mum and she doesn't know why or what it is like it's not like her mum's died or anything she just isn't in Hannah's life and um, I really really enjoyed this story I thought it was good to have like 
the point of view of a child all the way through the story, especially in a point of view from a child with a disability. I thought that was like a different touch on um, a book because I feel like we got the way that Hannah speak, like thinks about things and the way she speaks about things and like her current personality and things that came across really well in the book and I feel like that was well like described um but yeah it was just a great story I thought the flow of the like story was really good I felt like towards the end it was like a little bit slow though could have sort of like either been cut down or you know picked up the <laughs> pace a little bit faster I did really enjoy Hannah's relationship with like her father and her friends and things like that that was really nice to see and it was just like f more following her life and just following like what she thinks about this like wolf and what she thinks is going on and yeah it was just nice to read it from like a child's point of view because you don't really get that I don't think there was anything necessarily in the story where it's like to be made complicated I think it was just like there was one in at the end and that came across which you know it's sometimes nice just to have a simple story I feel like the story was more character driven than story driven and I really liked that so yeah that one was four stars So the next book that I read was also on my Kindle, so I'll pop a picture on screen again. This one's called Psycho Pump Drive. Um, I gave this one a three stars. I feel like when I read about the book, it was a very different take. So I enjoyed like the different take on it and the fact that I'd never really come across this before. So I was intrigued to read it and like sort of get into like a new type of story and see like if I liked it. So it was more just experimenting to see if I could gel with this sort of thing. I think it was more like sci-fi rather than like dark and thrillery like I thought it was going to be. But this one was about Finley Evans who um, is murdered. And usually when you're murdered, you're just like, you think you die and that's it. But as he like dies, a black cat comes across his like path and sort of like gives him the chance to have a new beginning. But the new beginning isn't for him to like live as a human again, like get his life back. It's like to live in this weird like realm of psychopomp drive, but he can sort of still see what's going on in the real world, if that makes sense. So he can still see his girlfriend who he left behind and his family and things like that. Um, I thought, I think the actual take on the story is really fun. So the fact that someone's died but he's still living like in an alternate universe that no one else knows about and no one knows that you can live like that, I guess. Um, but I feel like sometimes in the story it was a bit slow. I feel like definitely towards the second half of the book there was a lot more action um, a lot more like fighting and things like that and there wasn't much dialogue in it I feel like a lot of the story was like just describing things and like what was going on in the surroundings and stuff so I feel like that was definitely that was different to the other book which was more character driven because I feel like this was more story driven in a way and um, so it definitely made me confused a little bit just because I like a mixture of dialogue and non-dialogue so I do like it when things are described but I like I like to know what like the characters think about it um so I don't really have a lot to say because sometimes the story went in and sometimes it didn't and um, I enjoyed it to a point I did like Finley's character and I liked the other characters because there was eight of them all together where the black cat chooses like eight people to sort of like bring back to life and then the cat himself is alive so it's like kind of like the concept of a cat and nine lives type thing um but i feel like it was definitely good for me to try a new type of genre like i said it was more sci-fi and i've never really tried that before um so i like that i tried it i definitely gave it a go and i wouldn't not recommend it to people i would just recommend it to probably a certain audience rather than like I won't recommend it to like a romance reader say or like a thriller reader but I would probably recommend it to a fantasy reader or a sci-fi reader um but yeah other than that I don't think three stars is bad not for not for me how I rate things three stars isn't a bad rating um but it just wasn't massively for me unfortunately
So the next one I read was The Drift by CJ Tudor. Um, I'll pop a picture on screen because I don't actually have the physical copy anymore. Um, but I rated this one five stars. So this one was actually my first five stars of 2024. I loved it. <laughs> like the the book is basically about it's um, three different groups are on this way to a retreat. One group is already at the retreat. One group um, gets stuck in a coach full of like high school students and things and then one group is stuck on a cable car so there's like a big snowstorm. So it tells the points of view from one person from each of these three groups and each of these three groups is all trying to survive so you know there's no food left say at the retreat and they need to go get some but the snowstorm and it's freezing outside and um, you know some people haven't survived the crash um, in like the coach but the ones that do survive they're trying to get out because they know the temperatures are going to drop and the ones in the cable car are already freezing because they're up in the air <laughs> in a cable car but some of them didn't survive either so it was sort of like a race against time say to sort of um get out of the coach and you know survive the retreat and get out of the cable car and I really really enjoyed reading from three points of view I felt like it made the story go faster but the story was very very fast paced anyways um, and it was full of lots of shocking twists like every so often you would just think that well actually no I didn't even think I didn't think about what was going on I didn't think about like if anything sinister was going on I was just too into the story to actually stop and think about that sort of thing but when I got to the twists and when I got to the shocking parts like it really really shocked me and I just I loved it like it was all things that I wasn't expecting at all and um, the parts that were confusing got you know got cleared up later on in the story and I feel like the book was just fast paced from the off so like beginning to end the pace kept the same fast paced great short chapters snappy great characters it just had everything that you would want in a thriller and obviously like isolated snowstorm who doesn't love one of those so yeah an easy easy five star read for you know for anyone really it's definitely a book that i would recommend even if you don't like thrillers or you're trying to get into them because it wasn't too like it wasn't too thrillery it wasn't gruesome in any way there's obviously deaths but it wasn't like very very gruesome it wasn't like weird in any way it was just it was just the run in the mill thriller which was great and i loved it so i would definitely definitely recommend it if it's like on your tbr already then bump it up so the next one that i read on my kindle as well was eternal tides so i did rate this one a three stars as well um this is about ethan who with the help of like his mentor mac and a historian kate goes on this adventure to find this like i don't really know what it is so i'm gonna call it a trophy <laughs> but anyways he goes on this like hunt to find this like trophy thing um you know sailing and caves things like that so it really reminded me of like between indiana jones and lost um there's obviously things along the way that prevent him from getting this um thing he's using a map you know people steal the map <laughs> there's always like an enemy in these types of things um again this was one that i wanted to try because it was something different it was something new to me like not completely different because I do read fantasy but it just seemed like a different type of fantasy it was a short book um but unfortunately it didn't hit the mark for me I feel like there was just too much I don't I don't know what the word is like there was just too much adventure and action maybe not the adventure part but I feel like there was just too much action in the whole thing and I feel like with certain books for me personally this is all personal like if there's action scenes in it i don't like it to be like a full thing that takes up the whole book and it didn't take up the whole book so that's why it got a three stars but it did take up a majority of the book like towards the second half i feel like it's always in the second half that things start to like go like all over the place but i really liked the characters i liked ethan's character and i liked mac and i liked kate um and i did like the baddies 
in it um i just didn't like the whole action type thing and the whole thing of like you know i liked the tenseness like are they gonna get there are they not sort of thing like are they gonna make it and um, the whole adventure part was really fun to read about but it was just the action like for me so I feel like with it being a short book it definitely like, helped I feel like if it was a bit longer it would have been a lot harder to get through next one I also read on my kindle I feel like I read so many on my kindle so it's just going to be pictures of like these books but um the next one I read was Killjoy um, I'm just gonna look to remember the name of it like it's silly because I actually rate this five star but I can't remember the names and um, so this felt um Jax has a little canine partner called Ace which is very very cute and um his wife Laura so this is actually the sixth book in the series I feel like but it can be read as a standalone because I haven't read any of the other ones but after reading this I am going to go back and read the other ones because I loved it um, so Laura is part of this theatre group um, and during one of the performances someone dies like and it's listed as like an accident but certain people within that drama group think that something was going on like someone was responsible so they start looking into it and then they dig up more information and dig up more things that have happened more mysterious um, deaths that have um, sort of been connected in a way in the past and they connect it to like different things it's a whole like it's it's a really really full-on mystery <laughs> like and that is what you definitely want from a mystery I would I would even say it was quite a cozy mystery to be fair but I absolutely flew through the book it's another short one but it just jumped straight into the action there was no messing around so it just jumped straight in and it kept that pacing all the way through and I feel like that's why I rated it five stars the same with the drift that's why I rated it five stars because the pacing was just kept the same all the way through jumped straight into the action um there were no like plot holes either which I liked I figured I felt like there was going to be a bit of a plot hole towards like the end but there wasn't so I was very happy about that but I just loved it there was like mystery everywhere you know all these characters I feel like there was a lot of characters to start off with but you sort of get to know them quite quickly which is good um but yeah i loved it i thought it was a very very easy read i flew through it quickly the chapters weren't too long either which was really good and like i feel like i read faster on my kindle anyway but even if it was a physical form i feel like i would read it like quite quickly because i was really really engrossed in the story so that is definitely a book that i would recommend to everyone as well The next book that we've got is that finally a physical one. Um, so I read The Chalk Man by CJ Tudor as well. So this was the January pick for my thriller book club of yours. Um, so we read it quite spread out and I feel like I read it four stars. I thought it was a very good story but I feel like because I read it so spread out we did weekly discussions so we were reading certain chapters per week but the way I like to do it is I like to leave it until very last minute because I feel like if I read the next set like that week's chapters at the start of the week I would forget by the end of the week what went on so I sort of left it till the end of the week um, but it's about this group of four people so it jumps in time from 1986 to 2016 which is like great we love a good time jump um but it's about these four or five friends and um, it's about them as children and then them as adults and stuff goes on when they're children that happens the deaths well not deaths there's a couple of deaths and at the scene sort of at every death like these children find i won't say children the teenagers but there's like chalk figures that are left behind at like these scenes all like close to these scenes to you know make it a bit more like supernatural <laughs> and then when they're adults it sort of follows them a little bit like there's still secrets there's still stuff going on there's still unanswered questions so i feel like it was just like back and forth between like this is what went on when they were teenagers this is the answers now like they're finally getting it this is why they are how they are as adults and stuff so there was a lot of there was a lot of things going on actually because there was a fair few different um crimes shall we say yeah we'll go with crimes There's a fair few different ones of those um 
so they all had to be wrapped up they all had to come together i thought they did come together really well i thought the story as a whole i really enjoyed i feel like the ending did fall a little bit flat for me it just wasn't it didn't shock me as much as i was hoping it would and as much as like the drift did i feel like maybe as well because i read it so spread out and i finished the drift before i finished this one i feel i'm not even holding the book up i feel like it was just yeah i felt like i just couldn't compare it to the drift um, but still an enjoyable book and I will be reading more by CJ Tudor. I do have The Taking of Annie Thorne on my TBR. Um, but yeah, it was just sort of easy to get through. I did like the time jump because I liked, I prefer, in some parts I preferred like the 1986 and in some parts I preferred the 2016. So sometimes it's a nice change. Um, but I would definitely recommend the book. I just feel like, yeah, towards the ending it just sort of fell a little bit, unfortunately. I'm trying to be a bit, not really strict with my ratings, but a bit strict with my ratings this year. So like if it's a four or five, it's a good book. But if it's a five, it just means it's like perfect in every way. Like the pacing was good. There was no plot holes. Characters were great. Like it jumped straight into everything. There was nothing like a miss sort of thing. Um, but yeah, but just to let you know, like my whole rating system, like if it's a one or two stars, I tend not to really review them at all but obviously for wrap ups like if it's a one or two stars I will say and I'll say why but I don't like to because I feel bad but if it's three stars and up for me a three stars is still a really really good rating it just like is sort of in the middle like I would still recommend it but I would recommend it to a certain audience whereas four and five like I would recommend it to most or all people and yeah that's just that's just something that you didn't need to know but still And the final one that I read was Down Among the Dead. So I read this as a buddy read with Susan. This was actually our first buddy read, which was cute. Um, so I think this is the second in like a trilogy or the series. But it's about Rose, DC Rose Gifford, who is called to investigate death at like a crazy climbs thing. So it's kind of like these like apparatus in the air where you go like down zip lines and stuff. So you climb up the ladder right into the air, go down zip lines to like the end, that sort of thing um but the person who's died has like fallen off but all her friends and family are saying that it can't be a suicide so obviously she investigates obviously she finds out things and it's connected you know and finds connections and things i rated this one a three stars i feel like the actual story and the actual case i really really enjoyed reading about i really enjoyed like finding out why certain things had been found out and how they'd been found out like so I enjoy following the actual case I feel like there was a lot of background on Rose's life that we didn't need to know and um, especially with it being a trilogy or series whatever it is I feel like the things that you find out in this book about her could could be spread out a bit more um but that's just me personally in a thriller book I don't tend to care <laughs> that sounds really bad I don't tend to really want to know much about like the police people's background or the characters unless like the character's background has actually something to the story then I don't mind not massively knowing about it because I just care about the case and how it leads up to the end if that makes sense but yeah so half of the story was about her background like I said I really enjoyed the finding out like following on with the case like following the whole thing of the case and then the ending was just it didn't seem right it didn't seem right for what was going on and it didn't seem right for like the big shock factor that you would hope to get in a thriller I feel like it was just sort of like this, this is it this is what you get in sort of thing that sounds really bad see I feel bad saying stuff like this because I don't like saying bad things about books but yeah, just personally for me, and I know Susan as well, we both thought the ending just wasn't great. Like I feel like if it had the shock factor more, especially with like the case being so good and there was just so much potential for it, I feel like. But still, a book that I would recommend, like I said, three stars isn't bad, but I just wouldn't, yeah, I'd recommend it to certain people, but I probably wouldn't like read it again. I don't think I'll read any more in the series, unfortunately. 
but still this is what books are about isn't it like it's fun to have these it's fun to have different opinions so some people might love this book or some might hate the book or some people might just think it's like mediocre and we've all got such different things that we like in books and that's what's so good about it but anyways that is all the 10 books i read in january i feel like it was just such a good reading month like i yeah it was just so good and i really enjoyed it and i really enjoyed actually reading different genres that i don't tend to usually read and it was just interesting to see what my ratings were doesn't mean that i'm going to stray away from those like genres in the future so like sci-fi and certain fantasies and stuff i probably will still try them but they're just not my favorite which is fine but yeah obviously we can tell what my favorite books were the two five star ones i'm glad we got two five stars in this month um, I feel like that's a very strong start so also I have put in £10 into my money jar so I'm doing that like challenge that I've seen going around where for every book you read you put in a pound um, so the way I'm doing it is every ebook or physical book that I read I'll put in a pound every hardback book that I read I will put in two pound so yeah we have saved 10 pound this month so that is in my little jar and that will not be getting touched and then we'll just see how many we have at the end of the year so that's really fun but thank you very much for watching if you did enjoy please like comment and subscribe and let me know what your favorite book of january was and i will see you next week for a brand new video bye